Good morning, high performance computing fans, and welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. We are here kicking off day three of our coverage on theCUBE. My name's Savannah Peterson, here with John Furrier. It's our third year doing this show together. Day three, every time we get smarter. Day three is always kind of like, you got the energy, you're amped up, your adrenaline's pumping, but this segment is, to me, super exciting because we have the first AI PC that we've seen out in the wild. A true AI PC has got H100s in it, I don't know how many GPUs, thousands of them, so it should be great. It, it will be great, and we actually have something tangible. We get to look at it. Cam, yeah. thanks so much for hanging out with us this week. Hey guys, thank you, I'm honored to be here. I mean, I, I, if we go back to the first time I uh, came up to theCUBE, I disrupted one of your interviews with a robot dog. <laughs> so I think this time, you know, watch for permission, you know? Yeah. yeah. You're always here to bring us the toys. Yeah. I, I guess I should let you introduce the other guest on the stage yeah. as well. Cam, tell us about this computer. This is Ava's. This is our um, all-in-one uh, personal supercomputer, essentially an AI appliance for precision medicine. That is awesome. So personal supercomputer. And, and I want to, well, we're going to really get into the cool stuff here, but I want to ask you a question because I think you've done something incredibly smart with your product development. And rather than market to the entire world, which is what you hear a lot of the companies trying to do here, you focused your efforts specifically on healthcare. Tell me why you made that decision. I think there's uh, three main reasons why we focus on, on healthcare and precision medicine. I think if you look at the healthcare ecosystem, um, they have been underinvested in their infrastructure for a long time. That's how we ended up building this product itself, right? It's a they great have, point. Yeah, they have underinvested in the infrastructure, and then there is there is a desire to accelerate and improve the current efficiencies um, and the current processes. So ultimately, you know, bringing that infrastructure up to you know the standards that we're used to in enterprise AI or or any other enterprise yeah. system um, adds a lot of value. So that's that's what's led us to this product. You know, a lot of people have been talking about the AI PC. You actually need to call it a personal supercomputer, uh, which basically has- Which I NVIDIA love. NVIDIA loves it because NVIDIA's in it. So talk about what's in it, because this is, a, again, a PC, the old PC was, you did stuff on an office, the email, you got, a, you got a laptop, you got a device with it, you got a mobile phone, iMessage kind of connects to that, but WhatsApp comes out. So you start to see now the connected experience for the user. This is like a power workstation slash like the old PC model of does us something big. You know, nearly five, 75 years ago, as the Allied forces were <laughs> liberating the camps of Dachau and Auschwitz, the greatest computer scientists of all time asked a very simple question. Do you know what that question was? No. And we're talking about Alan Turing, right? I mean, I was oh, gonna yeah. say, it's obviously asked, Alan, you know, Alan but... Alan Turing, right? He asked a very simple question, which was, can machines think? And, you know, to ask that question at that time, it's unheard of because there were no machines, right? Yeah. If you fast forward, that inspired the computer, the pioneering computer architects to create our computing model that you know has evolved over the last you know 50 years, right? But that model, the binomial architecture model, it, it hasn't changed very much, right? The the memory architecture, the compute modules, uh, how it interfaces across buses, that has pretty much stayed the same. We have increased our capacity. We have increased our technology. We have improved levels of the technology, but that model hasn't changed. If you look at you know the algorithms, we're talking about the algorithms that were that are vogue today, right? Um, for AI, there were algorithms that were developed 30, 40 years ago yeah. um, that did, did not work at the time. They were conceived, um, but now are starting to work because we have a modern computer architecture, you know, led by the by the GPU, right? You know, if we talk about HPC, right, if, you know, in this space, I think it's safe to say today that AI is the killer app for HPC. If you would have said that in this conference 20 years ago, it would have been heresy, right? Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> right. Uh, so that, you know, with that thinking of how do we improve the, the, the computer itself to be able to run, not the algorithms that we have now, but the algorithms that are yet to come, right? We, you know, for, for us to unlock the next stage, we have to have software engineers and computer scientists create new learning algorithms. And you know we have designed a computer from the ground up with the best technology that we have in our hands today, you know, just to support that, that next movement yeah. uh, of technology. And that's why NVIDIA's earnings, we were talking about before we came on camera, is just selling so much product because people are preparing for that infrastructure, for the killer app, AI, which has more killer apps on top of it, search today, thinking tomorrow. What, 
okay, know that, knowing that, okay, let's believe that. What's the approach to building the first kind of PC supercomputer? I mean, I don't know. The, I mean, I call it AI supercomputer. I like that name, but it's essentially a PC. It looks like a PC. I mean, ultimately, we are creating a computer model, and we call it omics computing. Why do we call it omics? Omics is processing biological data from a human. And the amount of data that you get from a human to be able to do a digital twin of having your, you know, let's say, all your medical imaging, your blood samples, your genomics data, um, any sequencing data, that amount of data, it, it completely breaks the current computer architecture model, right? Our computers were created with parts that we had available for basic data structures. So our ultimate model is to translate the data, you know, translate the, the, the biological language, digital biology, into data structures that are processed very well on our computer. So what we've done in this architecture is, you know, we've increased bandwidth across, you know, every layer. Um, we have the highest memory capacity with the highest amount of compute possibly, you know, that you can possibly have. So that processing is state of the art. As we learn, you know, those data structures that map from omics to, to uh, a computing data structure, we can then create and innovate a computing model for the next generation of architectures. So what, I mean, I love this. The medical industry, having done medical device, it's incredibly hard to get approval, compliance, HIPAA. There's a lot of different factors that you're dealing with. You didn't exactly go into an unregulated niche Sorry. with, with this. So tell me a bit about how you've designed this to be able to operate in that environment. Absolutely, and that is actually a tailwind um, for our business at the moment. Um, actually, the regulatory environment has gotten much better over the last 10 years. I started my career building medical devices, uh, oh, cardiology, so surgical know. tools. Yeah, 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 yeah. It took 10 years. You know, we were very successful because, you know, we would sell the IP to, you know, the large Harvard manufacturers. But, you know, getting the technology done, getting it to regulatory, getting it to the hands of a doctor took at least a 10 year cycle. I think that today, that regulatory environment uh, is much better. It's shown over the last year as well. The amount of um, software as a medical device applications and approvals, and I think you know the outlook over the next four or five years is is going to be a. I mean, I think the economic boom we're going to have, partially led by you know the a, a, a pro business regulatory environment, I think is going to be very helpful. So, Cam, talk about the product because I'm. And we talked um, when before you came on. You've been here all day, and you're showcasing it here in the booth. It's a cool, our first ever cool feature of the cube where we present something we think is innovative. I asked you what your vision was, and you said, hey, you know, we built the box because no one else was, but you're a software company. Now, mm -hmm. people might not know, but you worked at NVIDIA on DGX. You know the playbook, software and hardware are together. NVIDIA claims they're software, although they sell a lot of hardware. No. It, the software's the key. So, no one has this. No. Just I want to point that out. Yeah. So, how did you do it, and what's in it? Like, give us the speeds and the feeds, and talk about the software, because, yeah. You know, certainly this is going to be a, um, a template for others to follow, I guess, immediately. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, you know, quickly on the speeds and feeds, right, we have 256 CPU cores, um, over 47,000 GPU cores, H100s, MB-linked, four terabytes of RAM, you know, just at the high level, over 1,000 uh, gigabits per second of memory bandwidth. That's actually what limits a lot of the AI algorithms today is actually memory bandwidth, right, uh, between the CPU, the memory, and the mm -hmm. GPU. We, so we optimize, we have an optimal architecture um, for, for that type of problem. But like you said, I mean, really what we've done, so that's at the hardware level, yeah. but we, we've also done is optimize every layer of the software stack to leverage that architecture from the kernel to the operating system, to the machine learning frameworks, ultimately, so the applications that we're working with, which, you know, that's what I would like to talk about, because that's the, yeah. what I'm most yeah. excited about, yeah. um, perform the best they can in any environment. I mean, at the kernel level, you know, just one quick example, the typical kernel uh, operating system has a four-page kernel, right? We have a L1 cache or a processor that's 64 kilobytes. So we can have a, 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 a different operating system that runs at 64K page that's 16 times faster than the regular operating system, right? So just just wow. one, one we got that level, right? And yeah. you, go, you know, and then like that, there's hundreds of other. It's a it's a machine, basically. And then all those little things add up uh, and then they give you the performance that we're looking at. And that's the biology, that's the whole, you know, taking the neural network concept of the brain, but from biology, human, building the data structures to make it better for the 
uh, the application. Now, what are the target applications that you're that you're using right now? What's the use case? Who's the user? And what are they doing? So, a lot of our use cases are digital pathology. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much you know about uh, pathology, but traditionally, you know, a, a pathologist or a hematologist would take a blood sample or a tissue sample, look at it under the microscope. You know, that's not going to happen anymore, right? Now there is this big scanners where you put the sample. The machine takes a very large picture, you know, over 100,000 pixels by 100,000 pixels, and then that image gets wow. processed by algorithms, and that's what we're doing. And, and uh, that's a use case that we provide performance no one else can today. Yeah. Um, another use case is neurology, neurology research. We're working with some fantastic uh, researchers at Stanford Medical School, Harvard Martinos, um, and they're doing what's something called TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. So they have a, a magne magnet treatment mostly for depression, there's a few other indications by the FDA. Yeah. And uh, what they do, th that problem is actually very exciting because they have matrices that are a million by one million by one million, and you can't process on any regular computer. That's why they need, you know, the memory capacity that we have to be able to simulate and, um, and produce the numerical results necessary to have a, an effective treatment. We fundamentally believe that AI is gonna save lives. I think your AI hardware here is also proving that. Where are you in, in the product development journey and when is this going to be everywhere so that this can happen in all the hospitals and medical facilities around the world? Absolutely. So, you know, if you look at the latest wave of enterprise AI adoption that, you know, probably started fall 2022 with the general purpose transformer going mainstream, right? Mm -hmm. Most enterprises already had a budget set for 2023. So most companies that were actually trying to sell products, it, you know, AI solutions and AI product, they didn't have the entitlement to sell to enterprises. We just happened to be at the right place at the right time because we started building our product in the, the end of summer 2023. We started shipping, you know, with early pilots, you know, that fall, early 2024. When we started shipping now this past summer, Jeff yeah, Abraham. Most health systems, enterprises, imaging centers already had a budget for AI adoption. That's how we've been able to build a you know nine-figure pipeline, you know, in less than eighteen months. So I, I was just gonna say, hold on, you've only been working on this for eighteen months? L not quite, less than eighteen months. <laughs> less than eighteen months. Okay, that's yeah. impressive. In hardware land, yeah. for the record, that is, yeah. Yeah. you know, hardware the fastest you can get out of it's basically like a baby is nine months. With that's two years cycle. Yeah, a yeah. minimum. I mean, yeah. I think a lot of the time, yeah. you're inventing a personal supercomputer in a short period of time. Yeah. This isn't your first rodeo in technology. You have a pretty robust background. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, hardware cycle, everyone knows, is at least a two year cycle. You can't make a chip or a system in less than two years. Yeah. And you know, at Computex, there was a lot of talk about going down to one year cycle. You know, they're bluffing. You can't do that in, yeah. you can't do that, in that amount of time. But what I'll tell you, you know, six months ago, we announced the most powerful personal supercomputer out in Better World. It was 128 cores, two terabytes. That's the first time we were showing. Six months later, we're yeah. here with something that's actually twice as powerful. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a six month cycle. So that innovation well, cycle is amazing, honestly. Well, you had a little inside baseball, cheat sheet, cheat codes, because you're at NVIDIA. So the software, what you did was clever. You took the NVIDIA stuff, knowing what you know, built it into a system and just optimized the software stack. I mean, that's a, yeah. that's the secret sauce. And that's what everyone's doing. This is the this is what the show's about, yeah. you know? get that software stack, and then figure out how to build a system with what you can do. Well, I'm originally Cuban, so yeah. we come out of the womb playing baseball, so. <laughs> <laughs> playing baseball and thinking about high performance computing? Is that, yeah, in your case? Well, I said, it's inside ball, right? Yeah. Whatever, yeah. whatever it takes to get on base, we hit a home run with this, because I think we're so proud to have Feel you um, take some part of our booth. Again, this is our first time we've ever showcased a what's cool. We think what you're doing, Cam, is totally cool. And again, at Remars, uh, the Amazon event, you had that robot. We knew you were cool then, you're even cooler now. No, yeah, so I thanks for being part of theCUBE. So, uh, are you, I mean, I'm assuming this is a yes knowing you and your brain, are you going to be able to innovate at this same clip for the next Yeah, we have a, we have a roadmap because, um, you know, our suppliers also have a roadmap. We, we're able to craft a roadmap. If you look at the things that we're launching, you know, we gave, you know, a sneak peek, but, you know, there's obviously um, a cycle that's coming next year, right? I think for us is getting this into scale production. You know, we went from prototype to yeah. um, engineering validation to design validation. Now we have a design that's ready to do mass production. So, you know, we'll get this design in mass production, uh, but the chassis itself, 
you know, can leverage any, you know, um, architecture, you know, that would come, you know, 2025, 2026. So, um, yeah, we'll have more about that next year. <laughs> okay, well, that, that leads me to my last question because yeah. you just teed it up. When we have you hanging out with us at Next Supercomputing, or maybe even sooner than that, mm. quite honestly, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say now? Um, there's a few things I would say. So I'm, I'm very excited about uh, the, the benefit that our users are getting. Mm -hmm. And um, for most of the use cases that we're looking at, radiology, digital pathology, neurology, um, we're looking at something called radiotherapy, which is volumetric segmentation, uh, mostly used for cancer treatment planning. That's something that we're learning very well now. It's a lot of Monte Carlo simulations. You know, we are at the, the place where Monte Carlo simulation, you know, got solved, right? Uh, those use cases, unlocking those use cases and adding benefit to those users is what I'm most excited about. And I love to, you know, next time, per, perhaps instead of having the computer, have one of our customers talk about it. Yeah. Great. Yes, right, we would man. love that, Cam. And I just want to say thanks, not only for sharing your story and being an incredibly brilliant mind, pushing the boundaries here, but also you've been such a joy to share this space with all week. And we look forward to doing a lot more of it. And John, thank you for hanging out for this segment. And thank all of you for tuning in wherever you might be on this beautiful day. We're in Atlanta, Georgia here, day three of Supercomputing 2024. Lots of coverage still to come. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.